All right, here we are, day 10, 21 days of fasting and prayer. Hope that you are pressing in, getting a lot out of this. Uh, I want to jump into the Word with you today. There's something about uh, fasting, and you notice all the food scriptures or any reference to food. You know, the Bible's full of it. Maybe that's because Jesus is the bread of life, that man can't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Uh, throughout the scripture, you see God talking about food, and it's true today, too. So Isaiah chapter 55, I want to answer this question, how does God make things grow and produce in our lives? What, what does God do? What is his method? What's his process for that? Sometimes you can spend a lot of energy and effort trying to get things to produce, and you're missing God's way. And you wonder, why isn't this working? Or maybe you're praying about God to do something, and he doesn't seem to be doing it. Probably because you're asking for him to do it in a way that isn't the way he does it. And he tells us how. And this goes back to praying the will of God. How do you even pray the will of God? You pray the will of God by knowing the word of God. And when you know God's word, that is his will. So whatever his word says, that's his will. Now, if you don't know like what his specific will is in a certain situation, what does he generally say throughout the word about that? And that's what his will is. So he may not tell you to marry Martha, right? Uh, but if you are desiring a wife, the scripture says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. So that's just something we know that marriage is of God. Very few people are called to uh, celibacy. Thank God that, you know, I don't have that gift. If you are in that situation where you're not married, you need to act like you do have that gift even if it's not for long term. But how does God make things grow? Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, or your ways aren't my ways. That's what God says. So the very first challenge we have is we don't think the way God thinks. But then he goes on to tell us how he thinks right here. And for us, our job is to align our, our thoughts with his thoughts. Look at verse 9. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So he's not thinking at an earthly natural level. He's thinking above that. He's thinking from a perspective that we need to get. And the scripture tells us that we have the mind of Christ so that we can think these thoughts. We can see it from God's perspective. It starts by opening up his word, but look what he says, verse 10, as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. What is he saying right here? He said, just in the same way, water and snow, they come down from heaven they, it, and then they don't return. They don't return in the same manner. It doesn't come back just the way it's sent. It doesn't bounce back. It doesn't snow or rain upwards. He's not giving us a science lesson on condensation and how he keeps the whole earth at the right um, temperature and everything else. That's not the point of what he's saying. He's saying rain and snow come down from heaven and they water the earth and they make it bring forth and bud. So that water that comes from heaven is what one of the elements, but it's what causes the earth, the seed, the the fields to bring forth, to, to break forth and to bud so that it provides seed for the sower and bread for the eater. That's really important. Seed first, then bread. There's something that God says about that right there that I think we need to grab hold of. He doesn't give us bread and provision first. He gives us seed that leads to provision. Maybe that's something you want to write down right now. When I'm 
in need of provision, I need to start with seed. So it's not, God, provide this for me. God, I need the seed in my hand that will set me up for provision. But how does God even make it grow and make that accessible to us? Both the seed that we need as well as the bread that we need, right? How does he provide and how does he make it grow? It's verse 11. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. God is saying that in the same manner that the, he- the water comes from heaven to the earth, waters the earth, and that's what enables the earth to produce and to grow and to flourish so that it then provides more seed that then grows up into your provision for the bread. He said, the same way that works in the natural with seed and bread, that's how it works in the spiritual with my word. My word is like that water. And when my word goes forth from my mouth into your life, I command my word, I send forth my word into your life. My word will cause you to grow, to flourish, to produce the seed, to produce the bread. This is how God causes increase in our life. He doesn't simply bring seed. He sends his word and his word is what causes us to break forth and to produce so that we have seed and we have bread. So as we hear from God, through the reading of his word and then the relationship with God pressing into our time of prayer, his word is coming down and that's going to cause transformation on the inside of us. It will not not work. There's no way that God's word will return to him empty or void. He said, it will accomplish the purpose that I have for it. This is how God causes us to increase in our life. He sends his word. So if you think about this in passages like Deuteronomy chapter 28, God commands the blessing on us. And not only does he command the blessing on us, he also says, I'm going to command the blessing on your storehouses. So if you think about it, your storehouse, what is that? It's your place where you store your stuff, your things. It's your bank accounts. It's your savings account. It's your investment accounts. And God is saying, I am going to command that. I'm going to send my word there and make it bring forth to provide more seed and more bread. So every time that you drive by your bank where your savings and checking accounts, you know, your storehouse there, you just come into agreement with God's word. Lord, I thank you that you bless my storehouse over there. That Wells Fargo bank, I thank you that you bless Wells Fargo. You bless my account over there. I thank you that you cause it to break forth. I thank you that my it, within my own accounts that I have seed and I have bread. That's how it works. That's how God provides. That's how God causes increase. If you need provision in your life, you need seed. If you need seed and provision in your life, you need the word of God. Get the word of God spoken over your situation. Find out what he says about it receive that word, you hold on to that word, you believe that word, you act on that word, and it is impossible for it not to work for you. This is how it always works. God said, my thoughts aren't your thoughts. My ways aren't your ways. You don't increase it just by hustling. You might need to hustle, but you need the word of God because the provision that he's called us to, uh, to accomplish the, the purposes It can only be resourced by God. So get his word in your life. It will cause you to bring forth, to provide seed and the bread. I hope that helps you today while you're fasting, thinking about seed and bread, and really be thinking about God's word. We'll be right back with you tomorrow. Love you. God bless you.